Hello and welcome to another lecture in the lecture series. Today we are going to be talking about autoimmune polyendocrine syndromes. Now these are a rare set of conditions that are characterized by autoimmune disease that causes multiple endocrine deficiencies which affect the endocrine glands. There are two types. So we have type 1 also known as Whittaker syndrome or autoimmune polyendocrinopathy candidiasis ectodermal dystrophy and type 2 that is also known as Schmidt syndrome. So let's take a closer look at type 1. So it's an autosomal recessive disease that is caused by a mutation on the autoimmune regulator gene on chromosome 21. It has no human leukocytic antigen association. The age of onset is usually in childhood. It's associated with two or more of the following endocrine deficiencies. So most commonly, there's hypoparathyroidism, primary adrenal insufficiency, chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis, ectodermal dystrophy of skin, nails, and dental enamel, and less commonly, hypogonadism, pernicious anemia, alopecia, vitiligo, and hepatitis. As for type 2, it's also an inherited syndrome, but it has multiple modes of inheritance, meaning that it can be autosomal dominant and also autosomal recessive. That is defined by the occurrence of primary adrenal insufficiency with thyroid autoimmune disease and or type 1 diabetes mellitus. This means that if there is primary adrenal insufficiency and thyroid autoimmune disease, you've diagnosed Schmidt syndrome. If there's primary adrenal insufficiency and type 1 diabetes mellitus, you've diagnosed Schmidt syndrome. If there's primary adrenal insufficiency, thyroid autoimmune disease, and also type 1 diabetes mellitus, you've also diagnosed Schmidt syndrome. Now, there are some other less common manifestations of Schmidt syndrome, and these include celiac disease, pernicious anemia, alopecia areata, and also vitiligo. Like I mentioned earlier, it has multiple modes of inheritance. Um, it's more common than type 1. And in this one, there is presence of human leukocytic antigen association. And it's mainly HLA DR3 and or HLA DR4. The age of onset is usually in adulthood. Now, as for the diagnosis, we usually test for condition-specific antibodies and mutations. So let's say, for instance, there is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. We will check for thyroid peroxidase antibodies. If there is a pernicious anemia, we check for antiparietal cell antibodies and so on. Or if there is mutation in the autoimmune regulator gene, we will check for these mutations. As for the therapy, unfortunately, there is no cure. We usually do management, and this management depends on the endocrine deficiency. So we usually administer hormonal replacements. So let's say, for instance, there's deficiency of thyroxine. We administer thyroxine. If there's um, adrenal cortical insufficiency, we administer hydrocortisone and then uh, some other adrenal cortical hormones. can also administer insulin. Um, in the case of mucocutaneous candidiasis, we can administer antifungal therapy. Like, we can also administer vitamin supplementation. So, like, like for instance, if there is pernicious anemia, we can supplement with vitamin B12. Or if there's... Um, Hypoparathyroidism, we can supplement with vitamin D. And also, we can administer immunosuppressive therapy, like in the case of hepatitis, nephritis, or even pneumonitis. That's the end of the video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't.